Now, it seems that most modern liberals believe that wealth is essentially limited. They see the multimillionaire with the Learjet, the big car, and the three or four big houses as a villain because if wealth is more or less fixed, if there's a giant but limited pot of money out there somewhere, then the fact that he has more means that someone else has less. His wealth has to be the result of stealing from the poor. But we conservatives see wealth very differently. We believe that wealth can be created from thin air, that people can, through creativity, invention, and hard work, physically create new wealth essentially out of nothing. For us, the rich man with the car, the houses, and the Learjet is not a villain at all. On the contrary, he's a hero. Not a good man necessarily, that depends on the individual, but his personal wealth is just a small percentage of the much larger wealth that he has produced, which translates directly into hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of new jobs and valuable products or services that wouldn't exist otherwise. Now, back in 1862, during the Civil War, the U.S. federal budget was about $530 million. In 2010, that number was $3.55 trillion. That's $3,550 billion. It's about 7,000 times more. Now, does that mean, in very general terms, just as a milestone, that there is 7,000 times as much wealth in America today as there was back in 1862? Yeah, it absolutely means that. The population of America today is only about 10 times what it was then, but the country is unimaginably wealthier. In 1862, the city that I live in, Los Angeles, looked like this. This was downtown Los Angeles right around the time that the U.S. federal budget was $500 million. Today, Los Angeles looks like this. Now, if wealth is limited, where did all this stuff come from? All of the shops, the restaurants, the 7-Elevens, and the endless rows of houses, each with automobiles, air conditioning, widescreen TVs, Xbox 360s, and all the rest. Where did the money, the excess wealth, come from to turn Los Angeles from a couple of huts into this? Oh, and by the way, this is a place where the poorest people have things that the richest people in 1862 never had or could have dreamed of buying. Things like antibiotics, electricity, cell phones, and a thousand other common everyday miracles. Where did all of this spectacular increase in wealth come from? What caused it? Well, it was three things. Let's say that one day you sat down with a pen and paper and you wrote a hit song. Or maybe you're an architect and you drew floor plans for a new office building. Or maybe you patented the light bulb or the transistor or any of the rest. You created something in your head that wasn't there before, something that had value which simply means that other people wanted it and were ready to turn over some of their extra money, their extra work tokens, in exchange for it. Now, you see this? This is an iPhone. This iPhone costs more than an abacus because it does everything that an abacus could do a thousand times more quickly and easily, and it does a bunch of really cool stuff that an abacus can never do. We're now able to produce and to own things like iPhones because thousands, actually it's probably millions, of individual people had the mental creativity to make each one of the technologies and components that lets the iPhone do what it does. The raw materials, the plastic and the metal that goes into making this iPhone cost just a few pennies, but the idea, the essence of this iPhone is worth much, much more.